Frankie goes to Hollywood. <laughs> hey, yo, Frankie. 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 Hmm. Now that's a Frankie Pacino certified. This gonna so make it's a dressing at a bargain can be family fun, right? Yeah. And look at all these. This Ebony is, Fashion Fair. Look at all the kids, man. By Eunice W. Johnson. The boys, the girls were natural. Even if they had a perm, it, it still was their hair. You could look at that woman and tell, even if it's a perm, it's her hair. And I, her, her weave is not ridiculous. The girls, kids. And she's happy not, with her, man. She wants to smile. Discontent. Everybody not smile. Not even You see? Everybody's happy in that family. You see? And this was, let me show the, make, make sure I show the front, because I got to record real quick. What the front said. August of 1986. And this will be, it said number two. Is this the second number two? This is special second. Special issue. Special issue. Special the issue. Crisis of the Black Family. Would this be the second magazine they ever put out? Issue. This is a special issue that came out in 86. The crisis, well, the special issue here. Crisis of the Black Family. They, 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 they consistently made a special issue to try to tackle the, the crisis of the black family here. Right. And then just talking the controversy. You know, the controversy. You know. I want to get this. I want to get this. Just showing here, the, you know, the controversy. Let's see if I can get that. It says, here yeah, was perhaps the biggest crisis blacks to face in slavery time. And you know what people like to say is slavery this and I said, no, this was after slavery. And 20 yeah, years yeah, before yeah, that, yeah, yeah. they were just as, as strong as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah. way stronger doing the civil rights movement and all that. Yeah, it was yeah, the black yeah. black man, woman, and child. Yeah. The, the challenge, see, the challenge. Then it goes no, the challenge. The challenge can be found in the statistics during the past 15 years, the number of black families head by women has soared. 113 percent and today 43 percent of all black families are without a father I'll, in the home I'll, before you finish though i was just telling you it's almost at 80 percent yeah. today yeah this was 86 this is 86 that's 43 so we damn near went to damn near 30 30 percent sisters yeah that's yeah. that's disturbing more than 30 percent yeah 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 since, since, and that's what that would be 30 Maybe almost 34 years, am I right? You're gonna start up a lot of conversations. You're gonna start years. a lot of conversations with this magazine. Yeah, I need to get that. I need this to get gonna, I need to this get This is going to. I mean, you're gonna have conversations coming from around the world, man. Yeah. But they need you to know, see that. People around the world didn't see until George Floyd about how we some they knew, but when when that came out, they actually seen what it was about. This article is going to show sometimes what it used to be like. Yeah. Some some of these families over there haven't really seen it. Exactly. Because uh, Hollywood don't show that now. Nah. So Hollywood is not. So some of these families around the world with this article, they're going to see what they can see. Wow. Those people ain't always been like that. Right. Some of them thinking that we've always been like this. Nah, so we this article is going to show them. Uh, it, it's a different, you know. Look at that. Say, save, save, the save, save, save the mother. Look at, that. look at that. Black mothers have loved us, have supported, chastised, and redeemed us. Where, where all the sacrifices in vain. His mother, my angel. Yeah, yeah. She had two pop interiors, man. She, he was cursing on, on the scene. And then, uh, my angel said, Who was that? Uh, asked Jan Jackson, important justice, you know. They said, she, that, That's, that's uh, two pop. My Angela said, I don't care that six pack. And when, when our Angela got through it, he was in tears, man. Yeah. That's how, how the effect she, she had on people, man. You know, this is kind of the decline of, of the black women making women uh, a sex object. And when you look at it today, this, this is that's what not bad. Is, this this it's gotten this is worse what, now. This is where it started, though. Yeah, it started yeah. with just showing it, the skin. It just started, yeah. that, Ken. It just started with the skin. Because back in the generation, women in, in, in the day, Dresses came up to there. Exactly up to the. They didn't uh, come the almost ball, up yeah. down. See, yeah. see, this is when women became out, became a sex symbol. Right. Eighty six and what they added, started making added, women uh, uh, sex, sex, sex symbols. It's a fashion fair. Yeah. That's a look. I remember that shit. See, I'm, I'm not too young. <laughs> I remember that shit. Yeah. Got that one. And see, this way, the, Ebony portrayed the black man back there. He was, look at that. This is where he was portrayed. Professional, a, a, a professional brother. 
Right. You can't get an Ebony magazine in Holland and see a professional brother not like that. Not a now. suit. No, not, not well groomed like that with a mustache, you know, with facial hair. Cause my dad said, man, you know, never trust a man without a beard or a mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we as your witnesses, man. Exactly. You, you can't, we, back in the day, while we don't go out and preach and work with a beard because it'll take too much attention, people be looking at our beards to the message. Exactly. So, so it's more of a distraction. It's more of a distraction. You know, look at that right on. Yeah, I remember See, that. See, it put brothers, man, in a positive light, bro. Look at it. Right. right on. That brother ready for the race. Yeah, even though they had us doing different stuff with our hair, it was the, still the imagery wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't coonery or none of that. None of that. You know what I'm saying? He still was a masculine brother. Like, yeah, the yeah. masculine brother. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't feminize it. He wasn't feminine. And, they look up the mother and the woman and the man. That yeah. Isaiah? It's that's Isaiah, Isaiah, right? It's Isaiah. Yeah, it was Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah, that that's was the boy, time. That's the boy Isaiah. That's when, that's when uh, Detroit was on top. Look at it, American Airlines. You see, American Airlines. Yeah. See? American Airlines brings families together for up to 70% less. Yeah. And then, uh, then look, look at that black doctor. See? Yeah. Let's see. I'm talking about, I still ain't seen like a chick with no like hair extensions. Like that, is that the, a hair? The, that look like a wig. No, that look like a hair. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there again, look what she's wearing. Look, yeah, this showing, what, showing a lot this, more this skin. Is, so this is looking nightgown. Something is you wear. Yeah, tight. Something yeah. you wear to bed. Something. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, this is where the black woman became a uh, 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 sex object. Sex object. Sex object yeah, you know? exactly. And if you look at it, it's kind of like we're yeah. just going to do it yeah. slowly, gradually, yeah. just show you bit by bit. You know what I mean? Look at that shady chair. You know, look at that, look at that, look at that. See that? You know, you know. Fathers who walk away. The black family suffers as a growing number of men turn their backs on their wives and children. Now that things have changed, women are turning their backs on the, on the children. And people ain't this, doing this, it. People ain't doing it. They like... The script is flipped. Yeah. People doing it, walking away in there and say, now the women are turning their backs on their children. See? So we, we, we need to check, kind of change this picture a little bit right. for the woman right there with him, side by side walking away. They right. both are walking away now. Right. See. And then what's happening is she is forcing them away. She's forcing them away. That's what a lot of them don't like. She's forcing them away. Because she can get food stamp cars. Arkansas would give them a $2,000 to go, a voucher to go get your car. So right. she's saying, if I get food stamp, I get these checks. You know, uh, child support, why do I need a man? Exactly. So now i just seen two girls, they were homosexual girls, nice looking young ladies, at, at the flea market. Right. Where it goes back there. That was what God family meant to be. Exactly. That's what the family's supposed to have been. Right. But the devil has transformed it into another, another way. Not your t typical teen mother. Yeah, let's see. Chicago honor student Barbara Washington balances books and baby to stay at the top of her class. Right. Girl looks natural. No, in in 86. No yeah. not, not kind of putting in his, in his salt and wound. They were pushing more women could get more programs right. than black men. Black men couldn't get the, the they just recently they're concentrating on it, but black women have always in it can get the resources, right. the, the recognition to go and push farther because they were op they were doors, especially if she had a child, that was another incentive for her to get more money. Right. For the black man, he was left without a child, so he didn't have a he didn't have any uh, cards to play. Right. So his 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 when he did his hand, he didn't have all them ace and spades or uh, the kings and. Uh, he just had the regular cars. He was trying to deal. Now he he was dealing. He was making it, but he just couldn't get that good hand. Right. Only a few got the good hands. Only a few got the good hands. That and you know certain ones as a whole, the black race starts. The black man starts slipping through the cracks. What's going on, y'all? It's Sega Pacino back with another video. So I want to talk about the crisis of the black family. Now, I mentioned that I would make a live about this and we was, I was going to have like a general discussion. I probably had a general discussion later, but I want to talk about this particular issue 
that I've seen from Ebony Magazine in 1986. I ran into a brother in the hood. He was a, a Jehovah Witness. And even though I'm not religious and I've been Christian before, I've been down with the I've been down with you know Islam, I've been down to FOI, I've been there different different ideologies. I've been there done that. You know what I'm saying? I've been Sunni Muslim. I've been I've done that I've been all that. So I'm not religious at this point. But me and the brother can have a good deep down serious discussion about the black family and what the problems of the black family are. Now, I'm gonna go over a few things to point out, but I wanna give a quick understanding of something. The problem with the black community what happened is, is that over the course of decades ago, even before the civil rights movement, there was always man, woman, children, black man, woman, children, black, all black. Now, the problem with that is that this was the start of a different era. And what happens is the feminist movement had already did a large problem where I want to say the percentage was 43% in 1986. And if we all good at we're not the best at math, I'm pretty sure. But almost 40 years ago, it was at 43%. It's over 75 today. So last time I checked, if a, if a certain percentage of some problem isn't gotten lower, or if it hasn't become stagnant, then it's going to get bigger and bigger, and the problem never gets better. Now, of course, today, we say that single motherhood isn't a big issue because we'll say that women can raise men. The problem is that are you worried about your men being successful if you're going to raise them alone? Because just because you raise them to be an 18, a 19, a 28, a 20 year old male of color does not mean you raised a man. Because let's be real, I'm a black man, I'm 38. A lot of black men out here have no leadership qualities. They have no man, they have no masculinity in their bone. They have no, they have no, they, they just, they're mentally weak. They're effeminate. And a lot of them are, are men who have no principles, no lack of leadership, no leadership, no, no, no. They, they, they lack male guidance to where they can't show their children, you know, any type of guidance themselves. No lack of responsibility etc now this is the thing this has nothing to do with men who are homosexual this has nothing to do with men who choose to go both ways we're talking about a common core principle of children being involved because us men and women as adults if we do what we do that's fine but we're talking about children being involved and this is why it says on the issue crisis of the black family that's the problem it's all about raising children to become men and women of means now this is 1986 i want to preface that we're going to go in this magazine we're going to show you a big difference of what today's look what today looks like compared to 1986 let me put my phone on vibrate here and this is going to be pre-recorded because i have to go to work and i'm really not i don't really have the energy to just go live and do it but this is all one tape so forgive me if i'm fumbling a little bit as you can see here this is the cover man with a suit woman natural hair children natural hair you see it now I want to also point out something dark skin male light skin woman lighter skin male woman a young girl darker skin woman so we see here that his genes came out a lot more with this one her genes came out a lot more with that one now we can debate if those are biologically their kids but they went out of their way to show you we can have children of all shades but nothing is less no, nothing is more important than the fact that you see these children with natural hair they don't have earrings in their ear you know what I'm saying there's any problem with girls having earrings but these girls don't have earrings you don't see this man with earrings in his ear I don't got no problem with men who wear earrings but I'm just saying so that's something to look at. If you're, if you are black and you're a young girl or young boy and you see this photo, the fact that even though the problem, my only problem I have with this nobody smiled, but the fact that you see them, this is inspirational to see. Man, woman, child, children, plural. Second page. Now, 
of course you're gonna have your things such as you know cigarette you know you know nicotine your cigarette you know ads but pay attention to something this is a black woman natural black woman dazzling with beauty you know natural she has a lot of a skin showing which was kind of like a thing that came into the, the fold you know women looking you know being overly sexualized so to speak but even though you see the man in the background what he got on a tuxedo these are this is how beautiful we look regardless of the fact of her showing more of her skin this is a natural black woman a beautiful natural black woman you see that even with the cigarette ads they found the way now uh, my cousin had pointed out yo that was like trump daughter, but that's another story <laughs> Even when we wore jerry curls, because this was 86, I want to preface this, this is 1986. Even when we wore jerry curls, right? White girl, I'm assuming she's white, but she could be biracial. So forgive me if, forgive me if I'm incorrect about that. But we'll just go with the fact that this is a white girl. Or a mixed girl. Because I don't think a white girl hair will be this kinky. But that's my, that's my, that's my opinion. Super curl, whether black or white. Super curls is out of sight. Now I don't think this girl is white. Just because you see that don't mean that girl is white, but she she could be biracial. That's just my personal opinion. But even though you see her, look at the natural black woman. You see that? Making the happiest curls ever. Ain't going to table of contents, you know, blah blah blah. What will be? Was it the Honda Accord? Goodness, we came a long way, huh? <laughs> Speaking of people, all right, Mr. and Mrs. David Atkins. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I think that's what I need to do. So I'll make sure we can see as much as possible. There we go. Should be legible. We had 1080p when I recorded this. Speaking of people, Mr. and Mrs. David Atkins. David and Nola Atkins of Chicago above have been married 54 years. 44 years ago, they moved from Greenville, Mississippi to Chicago so that their four, so their children could have better educational opportunities. They have 13 children. They have 13 children, 25 grandchildren and nine great grandchildren. Atkins was a former and a construction worker in Mississippi and head custodian for the Chicago Housing Authority. 27 years before retiring mrs. Atkins has remained a home maker this is these two now I'm not gonna read all of this stuff so we're gonna like go through and skim through as much as we can it's gonna be a very long video so I don't care how long it be I just wanted to really make a point here I'm gonna read the second one before I make my point about it Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd G. Robinson. Lloyd and Cynthia Robinson of St. Louis left. These three two. I do like R. Kelly. Anyway. Married in St. Louis in 1935. Renewed their vows. Their last year to mark 50 years of marriage. Following the ceremony were the gala, dinner, party at Holiday Inn Clayton Plaza. And a second honeymoon in L.A. Robinson retired at 47 years as a chauffeur at Monsanto's Chemical Company in St. Louis. And Mrs. Robinson has remained a homemaker. They have a daughter and four grandchildren. They are members of Rising Star MB Church. Even though they're church going folk, as we call it. These old people raised raised up love amongst each other and this they have grandchildren. The point I'm trying to make here is we're only on page six. More inspiration for me being a young black boy, a young black girl, or a teen, or a young adult. You know what I'm saying? This is inspirational because you start looking at this in '86. You can't. You can rarely see this in a magazine, yet alone television, yet alone YouTube. You don't. You don't see this. This is six. This is page six. So immediately, if I got this magazine in '86, I'm already intrigued. I'm already, I'm already, I'm persuaded to, to even be involved with marriage. I'm, 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 I'm influenced here. You see what I'm saying? Let's continue. Of course, about the curl shit. Now you know we all can, we all can talk about the fact of, uh, 
the way we do it out here, it, it has some type of effect on a lot of us not liking our nappy, kinky hair, or whatever. So, and I will get into this, but we're gonna just keep going. Of course, there's some more inspiration, and then in between it, they have the curl, you know, ad, which is kind of like another prop. But I digress on that. As we get into here, this is why we choose digital. All right, now this is the the new the new wave of computer sales and software professionals that you can see. All right, so they're, they're talking about businesses and things of that nature. Why Ultra? The only Dia by pediatrics. All right, what about the uh, Ultra Pamper? What about this Ultra? About I'm sorry, I'm, what's this about Ultra Pampers? It's been formally accepted by the select group of pediatrics professionals. The National Association of Pediatric Nurse Associates and Practitioners. No diaper has ever received their recognition before. So now we're talking about diapers. You know, it's things that help babies. But if you look, the doctor is a black woman. A black woman. And the baby is a black baby. Let's continue. Pampers is per accepted experts. All right. Now, I'm not going to get into all this stuff about Ultra Pampers, blah, 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 blah. Taste of the Pride of the USA. This is, uh, is that Michelo? A Miller? Oh, this is beer. No face was on the beer ad, apparently. We're on page 15. Soft and beautiful. You look at the women, even though they wore perms, it was their hair. Nothing about no hair weave, nothing about no extensions, nothing about no wigs, nothing about none of that. All right. Let's continue here. Letter to the editor. This stuff that people wrote. Smoke, please try Carlton. Take comfort, take extra chill to X Lax. <laughs> All right, can can use can your family use cash benefits 40, 30, 40, 50 dollars per day for hospital confinement? All right, now you can see a black man that got a check, supreme life plan, blah blah blah. Train to be a model, see that men and women since 1939, blah blah. blah. Babazan School at Fifth Avenue, and then I see it's trained thousands of model careers. See that this is something that people would used to. If you wanted to be a model, you had to earn to be a model. Now you got IG. You ain't got to earn shit. Just start your page, take your clothes off, look cute, you know, filter your photos, and boom, you're a model. You ain't got to call 212-371-4300. Anyway, let's continue. Magic for bump, you know, shaving powder. Do that another hair relaxer and here we go now here we go this is where it gets very interesting go ahead get close can ebony Let me make sure we can read this yes you should be able to read that but just in case you can't we'll zoom in a little bit more all right now we take it up the whole screen there's no excuse for it here we go the black male shortage i've just finished reading the article how black women can deal with the black male shortage May of 2086, I'm going to keep prefacing that, which I sometimes refer to as a crisis. Crisis. This is 1986. This is not 2020. This is not 1985. This is 86. I meant to say 95, but y'all get my point. I am nearly a 35-year-old black female, and I have never been, I've been divorced nearly 12 years. There have been times that I was so des depressed. Because it seemed that everyone except I had a man. I want y'all to think about what I just read there. Women are not women are not even thinking about having a man like that. Not as not on a more large majority. A lot of them are not thinking like this. So let's continue. Like she's depressed she don't have a man. You understand that? Women of 2020 are not going to come out and say, I'm depressed because I don't have a man. This is not ever, like, I'm pr you probably never going to see this in a magazine again. You're definitely not going to see this in a, on YouTube. And if you do, it's very rare. It's like, it was so fucking minuscule. Anyway, it's so fucking small to see that. Like, that just, that cut me deep just to see that. Then to see our beautiful black men with white women really drove home some feelings of inadequate adequacy especially when I could 
clearly see that these women didn't have as much on the ball as I do. I almost gave up. Alright? I almost gave up. And black men had me so convinced that it was an unforgivable sin to even consider crossing the racial and cultural lines that I began to feel I was doomed to life, to a life of singleness. Not so after taking nearly six years to undo these feelings. Six years, six years, y'all. I'm now finding myself attracted to men of other races and cultures. They are interesting, sometimes fascinating, and fun to be with. I find that because of cultural differences, I'm somewhat guarded, but hope this passes in time. I refer to these men as men of color, as their skin still has some of the beautiful shades of color that I love. I'm almost, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> One take, I've always thought our black men are the most beautiful, interesting, fun-loving group of men around. I'm not overlooking their shortcomings. I'm not overlooking their shortcomings. I'm not overlooking their shortcomings. Ladies and gentlemen, she wrote that. But in spite of them, I still love our black men. But there are just some, there, there's just something. I'm sorry, I said something. What the hell? I don't even see something. But there's just doesn't seem to be one out there for me, Brenda A. Gray. I admit, I've rubbed this type of Topeka can, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that must be Kansas. Anyway, I have read many articles that have stated that there's a shortage of eligible black, black men. I do not totally agree with this. The problem may be that there are not enough suitable black women. Many black women have are having children out of wedlock. Many black women are having children out of wedlock. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 1986. It's 86. And are looking for someone to care for them and their child. I have heard it said that it takes a, a mature man to be in this situation. This is nonsense when it can plainly be seen that the woman's motive really is. This is nonsense when it can plainly be seeing what the woman's motive really is. There are black women out there playing some vicious games on men. I have found myself in other black men who are fed up with the attitude of black women and their money hungry games. Please black women get eligible too and stop passing the buck. Now this is Manuel Mitchell apparently wrote that. Let me see if I get this correct here. Let's scroll back up. Okay, so this is uh, Atlanta, Georgia. That's dude from Atlanta, Georgia. Black male shortage. Brenda Gray wrote that. Mitchell, Manuel Mitchell wrote that. Okay, so you can go into this. Now, this is 1986. This person right here is obviously a male from the Bronx. The Boogie Down. The irony in that. We're talking about New York City, by the way. Of course, they got a black man in the picture, as you can see. Natural black man, look normal, don't look out of out of control or any type of nothing. He's flexing masculinity. You see that? Even though it's a beer commercial, regardless. And it's Jeffrey Osborne. Can you woo woo woo? You did my. Yeah, I can't sing. Anyway. From up here, you see the fu your future with a whole new perspective, right? As you can see here, this is about the army, right? More ads. Because you know, magazine ads, most majority ads. Another beautiful black woman. Natural hair. Even if that is a perm or whatever, natural hair. A little bit of skin, but she's still natural, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful black woman. Got a wedding ring on. We don't know if that's a married, you know, wedding band, but it's a ring on the left hand, on the wedding hand, on the ring, wedding finger. Well, wedding finger, but y'all get my point. I'm not over talking. Backstage. Traditions generally just grow, but 21 years ago, publisher J. John H. Johnson and the editorial staff of Ebony decided to create one. 
That year, we decided that every August Ebony would publish a special issue devoted entirely to a subject of serious interest in black readers. This year, with publications of our 22nd consecutive August special issue. Now, keep in mind, this is a special issue, by the way. We feel that our mission has been accomplished. Ebony August special issue is a tradition and will continue. So this is to talk about the whole crisis of the black family. You can read all of this. I'll put the link in the description box. What the hell is that? <laughs> anyway, band-aids. All right. Light-skinned older woman. Maybe not old, but light-skinned shit. Anyway, look at that. More free, moisturize, moisturizing ac curl activator that you can see here. Still a man, still masculine. Got a tuxedo on. She's holding him with the gloves, and yeah, as you can see here, she's smiling. It's beautiful, right? These are different, you know, different little stuff. They have many bookshelf. The black masculinity, black man, Christ of the black family, they have black and white children, American key facts, their root culture, learning style. This is, everything is just black, black, black. Real shit, you know, discussions, you know. Publishes, publishes statement. This is a special issue with a special ebony flavor. It is a crisis issue which emphasizes, as only ebony can, the dangers and the opportunities. It is a problem. You see these quotations? Crisis. Problem. See that? Issue which emphasizes the problems and enduring strength. Strengths of black America. It is a now issue which calls us back to the future of the black tradition. By calling us forward as it calls us back. And by emphasizing the dangers as well as the possibilities. This special issue throws a new revealing light on an old issue and raises fundamental questions about one-sided stories which blame the victims while ignoring the basic causes and the millions of black men and women who are still on the front lines of black love. This then is a typical ebony leadership issue which takes us behind the headlines of the hottest racial story of the year. And it continues an evidence tradition which goes back to the founder of the magazine 40 years ago. For we maintain from the very beginning that black America is a whole, that we black men, black women and children rise and fall together. We never wavered in that view. And we were the first major American medium to sound the alarm on the deteriorating foundational foundations of black family since the publication of our first issue of the black woman in 1966 as you can see as a perfect era of the feminist movement was the 60s it's a fact the situations has reached a critical point that challenges every american every american institution this issue tells us where we are and what blacks and white what blacks and whites and black and white institutions must do about a situation that challenges our senses of history and our sense of morality. And here, as elsewhere, this special issue puts the whole crisis in proper perspective. It calls us to the high ground of the black founding fathers and mothers who said in a purifying love that passed all understanding that no mountain was high enough to keep them from each other from the sun and if we love with their love and work with their hope and determination we can save the children and mothers and fathers and the dream ladies and gentlemen of Marvin Gaye wrote that line I stand by Brandy E and J. <laughs> Black woman, natural. Look smiling, see that? Even though it's an alcohol ad. Look at that, man with the instruments. You don't see that in 2020 often, do you? With an instrument. And the woman has a hand in her ear. She never stopped hearing about it. He loves to blow his horn. She never stopped hearing about it. Now she's of course this is like funny because she's not looking at him like me. She's like, hold my ear, but she got the other ear open. 
that cigarette in our right or left hand. But there's one taste they agree on, Benson and Hedges. You see that? The controversy. Now we can get into everything. Uh, I probably will open up the phone lines when I do go live another time. I don't know when, but I just wanted to just put this together. I didn't want this to be extremely too long. But I will put this where you can read all of this in the description box. Um, you have to read it this way. You can see it for free. You don't have to pay for anything. Like I said, uh, I'll post it in the chat room. This will be a premiere when you see it. Uh, if you want to, if you don't get to catch the chat room in the description box, there will be the link in the comment section. There will be a pinned comment where you can watch. I'll uh, read this entire uh, thing. And this is the part where me and uh, the man was talking about for smooth skin and it's a lotion commercial but you can see how the women were being you know a little overly sexualized it wasn't that bad but skin being shown was still not a, a thing that was really that big you know color purple you see that save the fathers black fathers of today must fight to re regain national strengths of the past Anyway, eloquence. See that? Lipstick, natural black woman. Little, very little makeup, not a whole lot, but she got natural hair, beautiful. You see that? Black man, this is the, the other commercial with the suits. Even though he got a curl, he still got his hair, and it, you could look at it and just say it's just style, but he got a mustache. See? That's a. Uh, who is that? That's what you would call it, right? Who's his name? Blair Underwood or something? I forgot his name. Y'all know. I, I don't, could be wrong. Look at that. One of our most popular destinations. Look at that. See the black man. The kids. Everybody's happy. He's got a suitcase. Vacations. To see each other. You see that? Black people. You don't see that in 2020 that often. And of course, that was a, a United Airlines commercial. Not a commercial, but an ad. Another black woman. Hair covered, cigarette commercial, Virginia Slims. And they talked about save the fathers during the 19th century. Black men managed to play integral roles in the fifth families despite the ravage of slavery and the Civil War. After the war, when families were reunited above male headed households, became the norm amongst black urban and rural families. As long as you see that right there, when people get to talking about slavery is the reason. No, slavery is not the reason why we aren't a uh, black man and woman and child no more. But anyway, masculine brother right here. Another commercial. That's not Isaiah Thomas. I thought that was Isaiah Thomas. That's not Isaiah Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's not Isaiah. It looked like Isaiah when I looked at it in the magazine, but that's not him. Unless they took his face off of here or some shit. I don't know. That did look like Isaiah a little bit. That's not him. But that's American Airlines. Uh, another commercial about bringing families together. Even if you have to fly. Okay. Save the children. They keep talking about save the children. Ain't that what we're talking about today? Black children, youth, and families remain worse off than whites in every area of American life. And the gap is widening. The poverty rate amongst black children under the age of 18 is 46.2% in 1984. It's higher now than at any time since 1967. Ain't that crazy? More than half of all black babies born in 1982. God, I was born in 1982. More than half of black babies born in 1982 were born into poverty. Today, black children in young female how headed households are the poorest in the nation. Today, black children in young female headed households are the poorest in the nation. This is 1986. It's 1986, y'all. Imagine today. Imagine it. While a black child born in America has a one in two chance of being poor, a black child in a female headed household has a two in three chance of being poor. 
if that household is headed by a young mother under the eight, under 25, that baby has a four in five chance of being poor. Whether black or white, young women under the age of 25 headed households with children are very likely to be poor. Preventing children from having children, therefore, must be a high priority for us, for one of us. The poverty rates in 1983 were 85.2% for young black female-headed households, families, I'm sorry, and 72.1% of young white female-headed households, families rather. But black female-headed families are much more likely to stay poor. In female-headed households with older mothers, age 25 to 44, there is a 25% point gap between black and white poverty rates. Only 4 out of 10 black children live in two parent families compared to 8 out of every 10 white children. Births to unmarried teens occur five times more often among blacks than whites. Although birth rate for black teens, married and unmarried, have been declining, while the birth rates among white unmarried teens have been increasing in recent years. In 1983, 58% of all births to black women were out of wedlock. In 1983, 58% of all births to black women were out of wedlock. Among black women under age 20, the proportion was more than 86% for 30 years. These out of wedlock ratios have increased inexorably. The percentage of births to unmarried teens soared 50 percent percentage points from 36 in 1950 to 86 in 1981. <sighs> if that don't bother you I don't know what to tell you and I'm not done. What explains much if not all of a the long-term trend in black teenage out of wedlock rates in the relative portions, proportions of pregnant, of pregnant unmarried women who married before giving birth. Since 1947, the marriage rate for pregnant black 15 to 17 year olds has dropped. I'm going to repeat that because remember, we're in a different time back then when they're quoting these numbers compared to 2020, ladies and gentlemen. So I want y'all to understand that this is a 1986 issue. But with the quoting previous dates, sometimes decades before 1986. So as we say, since 1947, the marriage rate for pregnant black 15 to 17 year olds has dropped about 80%. And for, eight, for black 18 and 19 year olds, the marriage rate has down about 60%. Today, fewer black women marry and married black women are having fewer babies. So when we talk about, oh, married women are having babies. No, fewer of them are having kids than the ones who don't get married at all. This is, this is something in 1986. Can you imagine 2020? Can you imagine it? Such changes obviously have dramatic effect on the proportions of all births that are to unmarried mothers. The end result is that out of wedlock birth ratios have now reached levels that essentially guarantee the poverty of black children for the foreseeable. There's gotta be more, right? The foreseeable future or the rest of it? That's it? Okay, that's it. <laughs> and if you can see here, this is Mrs. Myrtle Simmons Brown, you know, a married woman of Chicago above listens to Dr. Nelson Stringer explains details. Let's see details of birth and right. All right. So this is our service. So this is them right here. 
Now take a look at these women. Let's zoom in a little bit here. As far as I can go, as far as I can go. Take a look at these women. Look at how they're dressed. They're not showing cleavage. They're not looking, you know, uh, slutty. Shoes they got on, the hair. Even if they got a perm, they're natural. You don't see they have bundles down here. Even this lady, even though she got a perm, you don't see I have bundles down here. Not shitting on nobody from wearing weave. I'm just saying, this is 1986. Let's continue. More black women, even if they wore perms, they were beautiful, black, smiled, natural hair. Natural, 1986. Look at that. Teaching people about pregnancy and how to deal with babies. Down in 2020, you have to go find that video on YouTube. Look for it. You can you can find. I'm pretty sure it's on there. That's the chick we was looking at with the with the uh, with the nightgown. Look at that baby, natural black woman, razor bumps, natural black woman. Goodness, we came a long way. Anyway. Fathers who walk away, we already talked about that. That's in the beginning of the video. Uh, and as you can see here, we talk about the senses about, you know, men walking away. It's the continuation of it. Look at that. Black men. Look at the women. Natural. Tuxedo. Tuxedo. Uh, see that? Look at that McDonald's commercial. Last time you said blackface at McDonald's that that looked like this, you know, a, a actual presentable commercial. Come on, man, look at that. That's food. Now this was more natural. Look at the biscuit. Look at that. You see that with the hash brown and the thing. And it. hey, all that. That's another story. Anyway, single black mother, as you see here. Even though she looked natural and looked happy, she smiled. Look at the little boy with the ice cream and. Popsicle, rather. But yeah, she's catching the bus. But it's not the typical teen mother. And this, like I said, the Chicago West Side. We all know about the West Side and the South Side of Chicago. We already know that shit is out of control now, but it was just as much as out of control in the 80s. But I digress. Look at that. We're at the library. You see the men? Men. If you notice something, most of these pictures have men. Look at that. Men talking to the young girl. Men helping the teen mother. You see that? Men involved. This is something that's inspirational. If you see it, you see it. You can't ignore it. Look at this. Teen mother. Here go the family. Even though she's a teen mom. Man. Man. There's a man around. Some kind of way. Anyway. Look at that. Another man in the picture. Man with an instrument. See that? Now I'm just scrolling through this because we're about to end this now. I'm almost at 40 minutes. Did not want it to be this long. And that, that's a very important article. I'm not going to read it to that. I'll let y'all read that. But as you can see here, look at this family picture, right? Look at this picture, right? They have met it for 75 years. Look at that. Now, we're not going to count the women. We're just going to count the young. We're going to count the men. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you notice, they all in the back. The women right here in front of them. They go another man. And they go the, the couple with the grandkids. You see that? Men with suits. Strong, masculine men. You see that? 1986. Can you imagine? You don't see this shit in 2020? When the last time you seen a picture like this on social media? This is a very rare photo. I ain't just talking about just men because of gender. We talking about suits on. Smile, everybody's smiling. Okay, they're not smiling, but still. Y'all get my point. Older men too, because we, we, we don't like to talk about the fact that most black men don't live to see 50, 60 years old. You understand? We don't live to be old enough 
to be around. Women live longer. But that's another story we want to talk about. Here's another picture. Family. Look at that. Man. Man. Look at that. Two men. Two women. Children. Even a boy got a suit on. You got a chopper suit on. You see him? We got the chopper suit. Chop, chopper suit. Chopper suit. Anyway, I don't know if y'all remember that too. Anyway, but they dress nicely. Look at this natural hair. Come on, man. This is 1986. I need to probably make the title is 1986. Look at that. I just take it. Let's do, do the Pepsi challenge again. Couple. Man. Maybe a young boy, young teen. But look at the man in the back. Another man. See this mixture of men and women of color and the kids. Everybody got natural hair. Come on, man. This is unmatched. Another family photo. Look at that. Men. Men. All I'm saying is that this is the inspiration we don't see today. I'm going to end it with this. All right. So what we have here is uh, two of the main females who are a big inspiration, whether we like to admit it or not, they're a big inspiration to young black girls. All right. And young black boys. But that's another discussion. We don't want to talk about that. Definitely don't want to get no strike. Anyway, young black girls are inspired by two of these women. The one she should be inspired by more. Most of y'all don't even know who she is. And I know you looking like, well, who's that other girl up there? Well, let me show you what the problem is. Rhapsody is 37 years old. Alright? Make sure I zoom this in. She is 37. Alright? She'll be 38 in January. Okay? Let me show you how long she's been out. 2010. This was uh, her first... I don't know, let me show it to you. Return of the B-Girl was her first mixtape in 2010. Her first studio album was 2012. She's released so many albums. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about the one that none of y'all... And I mean, none of y'all. Not really. Uh, maybe a couple out of maybe, what, millions? <laughs> All right, so let me explain some to y'all. Let's see, we're going to end it on this note. Eve is the third studio album of American rapper Rhapsody, released on August 23rd, 19, I'm sorry, 2019. <laughs> Each song is named for an influential, influential black woman, including Michelle Obama, <coughs> Oprah Winfrey, <coughs> Merle, Merle, <laughs> I mean to call him. Merle El Evers, Elia. Eve also samples artists like Phil Collins and single in an early night was sampled on the second track, Cleo. Nina Simone and Herbie Hancock. Alright. This was released on Rock Nation. For those who don't know, it's Jay-Z's label. They do many things such as promotion, Management, etc., etc., etc. E was critically acclaimed by contemporary music artists, uh, critics at the time of the release. I'm not gonna get into all of this. The problem with this is that y'all don't play these songs. Y'all don't play this album. Y'all know nothing about this album. You know why you don't know nothing about this album? Because you know more about them because this is what the mainstream push these two and the reason you don't know about this woman is because she's not getting naked she doesn't want to show you her ass she don't want to show you her titties she don't want to talk about sex she don't want to talk about who she fucked last week she don't want to talk about putting pills in no man's drink taking her money she don't want to talk about having sex with no other rappers she can't she don't have a story about getting shot no offense. Veracity 
is what every young black girl should be listening to. And I say that seriously. Every young black girl should be listening to Rhapsody. But we know it. We know what's powerful. The mainstream has the power to tell you listen to Megan and Cardi B and Nikki and Lil Kim's and all of that. Because remember, whatever the mainstream push you follow, you're hypnotized. You don't have a mind of your own. And then I remember this one girl. I introduced her to Rhapsody. She said Rhapsody was boring. This is the biggest Megan Thee Stallion fan I've ever met. She said Rhapsody was boring. She's raising three daughters. One of them is a runaway now. Think about that for a moment. Sucky Pacino for the Pacino effect. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button. And make sure you hit the notification bell. If you have problems receiving notifications, make sure you unsubscribe and then resubscribe and hit the bell again. On the right hand side, all of my channels will be available. And subscribe to all of them because with YouTube censorship, there's no telling where I might have to move around. So make sure you subscribe to all channels available. And if you have a cell phone, in the description box of each and every single upload, you can follow me on social media. You can also contact me via phone and email and there will be a link to each channel to subscribe to. And also, don't forget to check out my playlist, my vision series, and my uploads over the past few years. You can go all the way back to the memory lane as well. If you would like to donate, Cash App, and PayPal. Dollar sign Huggy Pacino. PayPal.com forward slash Huggy Pacino. Thank you for watching. I am Huggy Pacino for the Huggy Pacino effect. Thank you. Why'd you stay a vision, a vision?